Let's spill the tea on nonverbal language. First, what is language? Language is a socially and culturally embedded symbolic system of behavior. When people think of language, they usually think of verbal or spoken language. However, there is another side to language that is just as important. This is nonverbal language. Nonverbal language is communication movements like body movements and facial expressions. Nonverbal communication is a very important part of that of language because it conveys messages that may be missed in verbal language alone. This is particularly pertinent for people who are weak to understand highly emotional or traumatic events. In these cases, spoken language can fail to fully encompass the truly subjective and emotional experiences. This was the case for the Truth and Reconciliation Commission testimonies, which had survivors of gross violations of human rights retell their stories. These testimonies were recorded, transcribed, and translated, and as Fiona Ross points out in her paper about the TRC, it often results in a loss of most subjective feeling that may have been communicated through language or spoken movements. Another important aspect of nonverbal language is held within the clothes you wear. So if I introduce myself wearing this, or this, or even this, your interpretation of who I am, what I know, and even how I view myself will be affected. However, to be an effective part of language, there would have to be a shared understanding of what each item of symbolic meaning is supposed to be. For instance, let's look at the example of wearing a suit. Using Audrey's model of key symbols, a suit acts as a key summarizing symbol for a statement of a power hungry and success grabbing man. This ties in with how Audrey would define the summarizing symbol as objects of attention and respect. By wearing a suit, regardless of one's gender, one will likely feel more confident and will demand respect from those around them. This was the case for Amber Heard and her clothing choices from the John Depp versus Amber Heard defamation trial. During this trial, it became very clear that even though the public initially framed her as a victim, Heard did not want to be seen as one and used her clothes to communicate this. Thank I have you. never, never wanted to be seen as a victim, nor have you I ever called myself one. Using Geertz's technique of thick description, we can now briefly analyze the clothing she wore and the effect it had. Thick description is a technique used by anthropologists to describe aspects of human social life, while also recognizing, describing, and analyzing the cultural and socially embedded movements of those aspects. Throughout the trial, Heard wore distinctly masculine clothing, suits, and military style coats. This caused a lot of as a victim of domestic abuse, you might have expected to wear these suits to give them a distinct clothing. I even remember a lawyer commenting that they wouldn't have let their client dress the way her did because she didn't look victim enough. Many people found her clothes to be an attempt to mock her and she even wore a similar style of clothing during the trial. However, by applying Audrey's concept of key symbols, it is quite possible that the suit was an intentional attempt by her to establish herself as someone in control over her own story. The suit naturally implies honesty, sophistication, and power, and in the context of her entire life being sensationalized and memified, wearing such masculine clothing may have helped her to feel more confident and likely helped her seem more believable during her testimonies. So, as you have seen, clothes are an important part of nonverbal language. They affect how we place ourselves in the world and how we navigate social settings. So, remember next time to think twice about your outfit and what it might be saying about you.